Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the week. While we've been busy with the Walmart PC, and we have more on that coming up soon, we got news about the ongoing price-fixing investigations currently being spearheaded by the Chinese government for memory prices. You may remember the story from a couple of months ago. Well, it hasn't stopped. It's been going on slowly in the background, as government proceedings often do. So we have an update on the price-fixing investigation over there. And then also NVIDIA stock took a nosedive 19%. Don't really do too much on the financial side, but we'll talk about that. Board partners have way too much inventory right now, which relates to the previous item of NVIDIA stock. And then there was an RTX 2060 leak, among other things, for this week. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our ceramic mugs, critically acclaimed mod mats, or educational video card teardown and PCB anatomy posters that teach the names and placements of all the key PCB components. Learn more at store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below. Really quick GN item first. So this shirt is brand new. We have it on store.gamersnexus.net. I actually, I designed this one and then Andrew made the all the mock-ups of it, all the art for it in Blender. You may know Blender as benchmarking software for CPUs and GPUs. We actually use it professionally for things like this and the mod mats actually. So uh, yeah, we designed this completely. It's a two-tone shirt. We designed where the color differences are. We picked the material. So it's 95% cotton, 5% elastane, and it has kind of a sporty feel to it. Plus GN logo on the side there, GN logo on the front. And then it's got uh, that two-tone color just for something different. Uh, it's pretty fun to design. We're very happy with the quality, completely custom sewn, all that stuff. So anyway, let's get into the news. So first of all, the Chinese government claims it has evidence of price fixing. This is the biggest thing uh, that has come out in the last week or two. So we've been covering the Chinese government's investigation into DRAM makers for a couple of months now, and that would include SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron. Those are the big three for memory manufacturing. That includes SSDs. They really don't have any competition at this point besides each other, other than uh, I guess you could count Nanya, and they, they don't do a whole lot. They make uh, DRAM for SSDs, things like that, some of the cache. So the investigation stems from the theory of price fixing and anti-competitive behavior amidst skyrocketing memory prices, which you likely have all noticed. And all, it's gotten a little bit better in the last couple of weeks, but either way, in DRAM manufacturers' defense, they appear to be cooperating with the proceedings, uh, not on their defense, they've been caught price fixing before, legitimately caught doing it. But uh, previous history does not indicate current trends, so there's no, uh, no evidence that we have publicly yet of price fixing. And that's because the Chinese government, despite saying they have, quote, massive evidence of price fixing between the three memory manufacturers that we all know, China has not released that information yet. So according to the story broken by the Financial Times, the investigation has yielded evidence of the aforementioned companies conspiring to increase DRAM prices. Wu Zhengguo, head of China's anti-monopoly bureau, stated that the investigation has, quote, yielded massive evidence. However, no evidence has been made public yet. Until the Chinese government decides to be more forthcoming with its evidence, likely after it does some more investigating, it's worth taking this information with a grain of salt. So far, none of the big three have responded to the allegations, and they are fighting a state's side class action lawsuit that was filed recently. And when more information comes out into the public sphere, we'll keep you informed accordingly, of course. SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron make up the great memory triumvirate, controlling an estimated 95% of the world's DRAM market. China has since been trying to break into the memory market on its own, with no shortage of its own controversy. As a reminder, Samsung and Hynix were both fined in 2005 and 2010 for price fixing. But again, past behavior doesn't guarantee current behavior, and uh, the Chinese government has been attempting to break into memory as a stateside issue, so of course that requires some additional scrutiny too. But uh, we are not going to be the experts in this story, so we'll keep you informed as the experts continue to uncover the legal and financial proceedings, and we'll boil it down to the hardware topics that are most relevant to our audience. So stay tuned for more of that. Uh, it's been a slow process, but that's what legal matters are. So next one's a rumor, so put on your rumor hats, I guess, that's a thing. Uh, so this one especially, we're a little bit more cautious. To, I almost cut it from our news story uh, today, but we're going to leave it in there because it is getting some traction. So just be firmly advised, there's no evidence of any of this yet, so it might not actually be real. But either way, let's get into the rumor side, just for some fun. So Intel allegedly is bringing 10 cores to the desktop, and they've kind of already done that with the 7900X. 
but that was technically an HEDT CPU. It was about $1,000 when it launched. So when AMD launched its first Zen-based Ryzen chips in 2017, it sort of marked a return to the core wars for Intel and AMD, making things a bit exciting again in the CPU space, something that's been kind of lacking in the years prior. So 2018 has been a good year for CPUs in general. AMD and Intel had a lot of launches, and uh, a lot of those are, are very core heavy on the CPU side. So Intel's gone from comfortably putting quad-core chips at the top of their product stack with hyper-threading to going to things like eight cores, for example, with hyper-threading and even higher on HEDT. Now there's a new rumor from Taiwanese forums that has been churned on the rumor mill to suggest Intel could be ready in 10 core parts for mainstream desktop with a Comet Lake S lineup. If you're not familiar with the S demarcation, it's what all the desktop CPUs are. So an 8700K would be an S CPU. Details are scarce. The rumor only alludes to 10 cores based on Intel's 14 nanometer and that there could be an additional rain bus introduced to the design. Comet Lake is rumored to be the microarchitectural successor to Coffee Lake and Whiskey Lake, and is supposedly slated for mid-2019. And as with all rumors, this should be clear at this point, grain of salt, um, it, some of them are more trustworthy than others. We try to, a lot of the time when we report on rumors in our stories, this is some behind the scenes news for you, or information, when we report on them in these news roundups, it's typically the case that we'll check with our sources in the industry off record and confirm if those stories have any legitimacy to them. We have not been able to do that yet for this one. So uh, not really confirmed, but uh, the timing makes sense. Mid-2019 is about when Intel would launch another product, so we'll see if that happens. NVIDIA took a nosedive of 19% in the market this past couple of weeks, last week or so. And this news is adjacent to the coming up news about hardware problems going into 2019, especially with the oversupply of current or now previous generation Pascal products. So in recent earnings reports, NVIDIA announced that it expects fourth quarter earnings to only be $2.7 billion, which is much less than the anticipated $3.4 billion that NVIDIA previously targeted. The primary reasons for these shrunken earnings are NVIDIA's lackluster RTX launch, I don't think we need to update you on what happened there, and a miscalculation of the cryptocurrency boom. I don't think we need to let you know or update you on what happened there either. It's been quite a slump for cryptocurrency mining, and that has led to oversupply of 10 series cards and RX cards from AMD, specifically GTX 1060 cards for NVIDIA. NVIDIA's stock dropped nearly 19% after the news broke, which is the lowest recorded one-day drop for the company in 10 years. This news overshadowed the record profits in the data center and automotive segments, though. NVIDIA is doing well in that segment especially. NVIDIA's Jensen Huan has called this a crypto hangover, his words, and stated that the excess inventory of mid-range cards would take one to two quarters to correct. NVIDIA, of course, has an upcoming 2060 launch at some point, whether it be RTX or GTX, we don't yet know. But one of the consequences of this oversupply of GTX 1060s could be that the mid-range Turing cards have some kind of delay or other impact that we're just not familiar with yet. So we'll see. The ship dates could potentially be pushed back as inventories recede, but just depends on how well those 1060s sell for this final quarter of the year. And next up, board partners have too much inventory. It's related to the previous one. So according to new reports from Digitimes, motherboard and GPU makers in Taiwan, which is most of them that you're familiar with, are facing revenue declines and shrinking margins stemming from multiple factors in third quarter of 2018. One of the biggest ones is Intel's shortage of 14 nanometer. This has been a major story of the last couple of months now, to the point where Intel's starting to push some of its manufacturing to TSMC. Reported on that a couple of weeks ago. They're also pushing their uh, some of their chipsets, 14 nanometer, very low end chipsets, back to 22 nanometers. So that's also worthy of note, H series chipsets uh, in the 300 line. So uh, Intel CPU shortage is a big one that's impacting GPU and motherboard makers, primarily motherboard on that side. The erosion of demand from crypto miners, of course, impacting the video card board partners significantly. And then the US China trade war that's expected to have a major tariff hike January 1st, 2019. Asus and Gigabyte are both Taiwan-based. EVGA has a large headquarters in Taiwan. MSI has a large headquarters in Taiwan. Most of these companies, sans Gigabyte, do, actually including Gigabyte, do their largest volume manufacturing in China. Gigabyte has a smaller facility in Taiwan. I believe it's in Taoyuan, not sure. But uh, we've been there, we have a video on it, but that's a small facility. It's kind of an outlier. The other companies don't really manufacture much outside of China. 
So that's going to affect things going forward as well. These ill effects have caused companies like Asus and Gigabyte to report excess inventories as motherboard and video card shipments are down from last year, year over year. This means that revenue was below peak expectations for the holiday season as well as for this quarter in general. So for instance, Asus saw a 43% dip in profits for third quarter 2018. Gigabyte, for their part, only netted $4.27 million in profits for third quarter 2018, which is the lowest recorded for Gigabyte since third quarter 2008. Big change there. What's worse is these trends are expected to continue into 2019. Gigabyte is expecting to see its profits cut in half for first quarter 19 compared to the same quarter last year and, according to Digitimes, may swing into the red for fourth quarter of 2018. Intel and NVIDIA are also affected here. Intel's widely publicized CPU shortage, of course, is a major factor for their well-being, and NVIDIA's pricey new GPUs make for problems for both companies. Both of these companies also work with board partners, whether that's motherboards or video cards, and that's why you're seeing the effects stem to them as well. So then, Intel and NVIDIA are expected to hike prices in 2019 for their chips in a bid to maintain profits, which will further put pressure on motherboard and add-in board partners and likely lead to hardware prices rising in 2019 alongside the tariffs change. So we'll keep an eye on it, but not great news there for us, even though it's the companies who are primarily affected right now. RTX 2060, this is a sort of a rumor, but not really, kind of depends how you look at it. So the 2060 benchmark, uh, was kind of leaked through Final Fantasy again. Final Fantasy 15's database is a popular place these days for these types of updates. We saw it with the RX 590. We've seen it with an, uh, a yet unidentified Vega part. And if you want to be cynical, you might think that the companies push these types of things out to these benchmark databases by accident to create some buzz or maybe undercut their competitors releasing products in a similar category. And that might be what's happening. But either way, the RTX 2060 appeared there. The RX 590 appeared there recently ahead of its eventual release. And now it appears the 2060 has surfaced in the extremely flawed benchmark as well, the one that we've talked about in the past. And we use the RTX monitor moniker unassumingly here because there's yet confirmation uh, about whether it's going to be RTX or GTX. And there's plenty of speculation that mid-range turning cards won't be RTX capable. We've been among that group because if you look at it, is a 2060 really going to have enough oomph to really push RTX, really push any kind of real-time ray tracing when it still has to combat actual general performance because it's not the highest tier card on the market or in the stack? At any rate, RTX 2060 was purportedly benchmarked at 4K resolution in Final Fantasy XV's benchmark, and that has a high-quality preset leading to a score of 2589 points. For comparison, it handily beats both the new RX 590 and the GTX 1060 with uh, a barely trailing score behind the GTX 1070 at 2748 points. There's some variance there. Also, the benchmark is bad, but it uh, gives you a basic idea anyway. Uh, next, so as with all these leaks and rumors, liberal amount of salt here. The RX 590 was actually proven in this one, so they're not all far-fetched. But you know, keep, it, uh, keep in mind that that's not confirmation, just something that popped up online. As cloud computing becomes more pervasive in daily life, data centers' demand for high energy errs on the side of insatiable. Data centers across the globe are currently using 416 terawatt hours of electricity, which is an estimated 2% of global power. Global power for data centers has been a concern for some time now as they consume and waste enough energy to power small cities. Data in the cloud is expected to quintuple between 2016 and 2021, with cloud traffic estimated to account for over 95% of data center traffic. This exceeds previous predictions that global cloud traffic would double every four years, and as such, data centers are becoming increasingly scrutinized as the power concerns come into play. Going forward, data centers will be expected to reduce IT emissions, store data more efficiently, and build more scalable facilities. The SNIA, Storage Networking Industry Association, Emerald program at that aims to do just that with aiding in scalability and reducing emissions and increasing storage efficiency. We have a link to that coverage below in the show notes if you want to read more about what SNIA is doing, or SNIA if you prefer. So we got an email this morning from Samsung's PR firm that they work with saying that their new 860 QBO SSDs based on QLC NAND will use the new SATA technology. It's not new. It's, it was released in 2009 for SATA 3 and 2000 for SATA. 
But and we did actually email back and say, so just to make sure we're not missing anything here, what's new about SATA? Is there like a new gen? Is there a SATA 4 no one's told me about? Nope. Just a PR firm getting the words wrong. So uh, what is new? is the 860 QVO SSDs, not SATA, just to be really clear there. So SSD makers are getting on board with QLC NAND. This can be explained in our previous How NAND Works video if you want to learn more about what MLC, TLC, SLC, all that stuff really means ultimately. And the effect is you get higher density storage for a lower price with less endurance and less performance. So there's a trade-off. You get more storage, but it might die, it will die sooner, and the performance isn't as good. And those are absolutes. So, QLC is being used to bring terabyte SSDs into the fold at more aggressive pricing, although recently, and we'll link one of these below maybe, uh, there have been discount sales, new pricing on one terabyte SSDs at about $120, $150, depending on how good of an SSD you get, which is pretty damn good. But it can always be cheaper, apparently. So uh, that's where QLC comes in. And this looks like it's been on the market roadmap since October at this point, but they're finally releasing and appearing online. Samsung QVO drives will adhere to the 2.5-inch SSD form factor. We'll use the old SATA 3 interface. Likely no surprise to anyone there. The drives will use QLC 3D NAND, which focuses on density rather than performance. And early tests show QLC lacking in write performance and endurance, with endurance being the biggest point of concern that buyers should consider. That'd be you. The drives offer dense storage at a low cost, so might be a trade-off that's worth it for some use cases. Despite that, Samsung's QBO drives are rated for 550 megabyte per second or 520 megabyte per second sequential read and write speeds and up to 96,000 or 89,000 read and write random IOPS, 4K random. So far, there look to be three capacities, one, two, and four terabytes. Official pricing hasn't been revealed, or at least at the time of filming this, but the QBO drives should be cheaper in general than the Evo or Pro family at similar capacities. And those prices are probably out there at this point when it goes live. But that's the point of QLC, to be cheaper at the same capacity. So Samsung's QBO drives are currently expected for December 2018 and wide availability, but Samsung hasn't made that official. Last one, Intel and the 14 nanometer shortage. Mentioned a few times already this show, but Intel's shortage puts partners on hold through March now. So multiple PC vendors and some smaller vendors who are working with Intel directly on uh, high, unexpectedly high demand parts have confirmed and come forward that Intel's 14 nanometer shortage is beginning to affect their businesses as well. As partners, it was a rough place to be. What are you going to do? Can't make the chip yourself. So just last week, Intel made clear its plans to slash DIY CPU availability to the channel by about 2 million units, affecting all of us, and instead directing that allocation toward OEMs and system builders. Some of them more. <laughs> Some of them will make better use of those chips than others. So it seems that Gemini Lake SOCs are so backlogged now that vendors are expecting and manufacturers expecting to wait until February or March 2019 for orders. Hard Kernel's Odroid H2 is an x86-based product, a single board mini PC that uses the Celeron J4105. And apparently that company undershot demand for the system by so much and sold through its 2,000 products in about 24 hours that it's become a problem that they sold so many because they can't get more inventory. So they're part of the, the group that's been confirming these reports of shortages. Intel reports that it can't deliver any more Gemini Lake chips until February or March and can't even confirm a delivery schedule until January. So that's potentially on the optimistic side for those, uh, those months. Intel has already offloaded some of its entry-level chip production to TSMC. They've offloaded some of their chipset production as well or brought it back to 22 nanometer and rumors have suggested SOCs may become outsourced in addition to these other parts. But if it keeps production going, then that's what they need to do. So that's it for this one. As always, you can go to store.carensnexus.net. Not as always, brand new. You can pick up this shirt there if you'd like to check it out. And you can also go to patreon.com slash carensnexus to help us out directly. We need to do another Ask GN and Patreon's Ask GN. We'll get that in soon, this week probably. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.